Let's be honest, if someone asked you where it's easier to get sunburned, on a tropical beach or in the Arctic, you'd probably choose the beach. You know, sand, sun, sunscreen. You forgot to reapply. Classic vacation burn. But here's the twist, you're actually more likely to get scorched in the Arctic. Welcome to another episode of Nature is Out to Get You. So, how is this possible? You're freezing, you're wearing three coats, penguins or polar bears depending on which pole you're at, yet somehow your face ends up redder than a lobster at a tanning salon. Let's break down the science behind this icy betrayal. First off, the cold doesn't mean the sun's gone. It's still up there. It's just hiding behind a chill vibe. UV radiation, the culprit behind sunburns, is not heat. It's a different wavelength altogether. You can be freezing your nose off in sub-zero temperatures and still be bombarded with UV rays like you're on a Caribbean cruise. Cold and UV aren't even on speaking terms. One doesn't cancel out the other. In fact, that disconnect is what makes UV exposure in cold environments so sneaky. You don't feel hot so your brain doesn't scream, sunblock now. But UV rays are still doing their thing, breaking down skin cells, damaging DNA, and aging you faster than your Wi-Fi router can load a cat video. And let's not forget, UVB rays are sneaky little beasts that do most of their damage without any warning. No redness, no stinging, just a delayed attack that makes you look like you lost a slap fight with a ghost six hours later. Even worse, UVA rays go deeper into your skin and accelerate aging. Think crow's feet, sunspots, and that leathery look that says, I've been outdoors for a while and I regret nothing, except the lack of sunscreen. Here's where it gets even more annoying. Snow doesn't just sit there looking pretty. It reflects up to 80% of UV rays back at you. Compare that to sand, which reflects maybe 15%, or grass, which is more like 5%. Snow is like the overachiever in class. Max effort, max damage. So while you're hiking or skiing or just trying to survive without slipping on your face, you're being hit with UV from above and below. It's like getting punched by the sun and then uppercutted by the ground. That's why mountaineers wear sunglasses that look like they belong in a 1980s sci-fi film. It's not just just style, it's protection. Snow blindness is a real thing. And yes, your eyeballs can get sunburned too. And this is not just some minor inconvenience. Snow blindness, or photokeratitis, is essentially a sunburn on your cornea. It causes pain, blurry vision, and the kind of tears that come from both physical suffering and existential regret. You might survive frostbite with some dignity, but snow blindness will have you crawling back to your tent like a vampire who stayed out too long. Oh, and bonus round, sunglasses help, but they need to block UV light from the sides too. Because that snow reflection is like a sniper, it finds a way. Also, let's be real, how many people wear full face sunscreen at a ski resort? You're wearing goggles, a beanie, maybe a scarf, that little triangle of nose and cheekbone sticking out? It's a bullseye. Now let's add altitude to the mix. Many Arctic and Antarctic regions, as well as high altitude snowy places like the Himalayas or Andes, are way up there. And the higher you go, the thinner the atmosphere. The atmosphere is our natural UV filter. Think of it like a global sunscreen. The thinner it gets, the less UV it blocks. For every 1,000 feet in elevation, UV levels increase by about 4 to 5 percent. That adds up fast. You're basically climbing into more radiation. So that serene hike through the Swiss Alps? Beautiful, yes. But also slowly turning your nose into a crisp. This is why mountaineers and researchers working in polar bases wear sunglasses and SPF even when the sun looks dim. It's not about light. It's about invisible radiation quietly rearranging your DNA like it's editing a screenplay. And at the poles, you're dealing with a double whammy, higher latitude and thinner ozone. That means your atmosphere is not doing you any favors. In fact, it's practically rolling out a red carpet for UV rays. Ah, the ozone layer, that invisible superhero shielding us from deadly radiation. You might think we fixed it with eco-friendly hairspray, but surprise. The ozone layer is still recovering, and it's especially thin over the polar regions. Every spring in Antarctica, and sometimes the Arctic too, a giant ozone hole forms. That means even more UV is getting through. Add that to your snow reflection, high elevation, and lack of sunscreen. And boom, your cheeks are toast. You're basically a walking solar panel with no off switch. What's wild is that scientists first noticed the ozone hole above Antarctica, not just because of satellites, but because people stationed there were getting fried. Instruments picked up off-the-chart UV readings, and researchers realized, yep, the sky's protective umbrella had a gaping hole. So even today, ozone holes, especially when they coincide with polar spring, can let in far more UV than you'd expect. If you're standing in the wrong place at the wrong time, you're basically sunbathing inside a laser printer. And while 
while international agreements like the Montreal Protocol have helped slow the damage, full ozone recovery isn't expected until around 2066. So, don't hold your breath, just hold your sunscreen. In the Arctic, the sun doesn't rise high overhead like it does at the equator. Instead, it kind of hovers near the horizon, casting those dramatic, Instagram-worthy shadows. But here's the catch. Low-angle sunlight means longer paths through the atmosphere and more prolonged exposure to UV, especially when it's reflected off snow. You're soaking in rays for a lot longer than you think, especially if you're out all day, which in the polar summer can be 24 hours long. That's right, the midnight sun. It sounds romantic until you realize it's a non-stop radiation party and your skin didn't get the memo. Imagine a flashlight shining across a mirror at a shallow angle. That's what's happening with the sun and the snow. More bounce, more burn. Let's be real. Nobody packs SPF 50 for a trip to the Arctic. You bring thermal underwear, not tanning lotion. The psychological disconnect between cold and sun is so strong that people don't even think about sun protection, which is exactly why it happens. No sunscreen, no hat. Maybe your nose sticks out from your balaclava for 10 minutes, and it's over. Frostbite and sunburn? Nature really likes to double dip. It's like your brain is too busy yelling, I'm cold, to also yell, UV attack. So it doesn't, and that's when the sun quietly does its worst. There's even a name for this bias. Thermal illusion. When your skin is cold, it assumes it's safe, but radiation doesn't care about your feelings or your parka. And then there's the wind. Arctic wind is no joke. And while it won't give you a sunburn, it will distract you from the fact that you're being slowly roasted by UV. Also, wind dries out your skin, making it more vulnerable to damage. Dry skin doesn't protect as well. Cracked lips, burned cheeks, parched eyes. Check, check, and check. This combo of wind chill and sunburn is brutal. It's how you end up with skin that feels like it's been exfoliated with sandpaper, then set on fire. This isn't a new problem. Early explorers in the Arctic and Antarctic often suffered severe sunburns and snow blindness, even in the days before we knew what UV radiation was. Photos of Ernest Shackleton's crew show frostbitten faces wrapped in scarves and furs, but also slathered in soot or grease, not for warmth, but to reduce glare. Indigenous peoples of the Arctic, like the Inuit, used carved snow goggles with narrow slits to cut down UV exposure, proving they understood the dangers long before science gave it a name. So if you're trekking across frozen tundra with high-tech gear and still forget sunscreen, just know you're getting outsmarted by a 10,000-year-old tradition. You might not think to pack sunscreen next to your parka, but you should. SPF is not just for beaches, it's for anywhere the sun shines, and especially where it shines back at you off bright white snow. So yes, it's easier to get sunburned in the Arctic. The UV rays are sneakier, the reflections are brutal, the atmosphere is thinner, and let's face it, your guard is down. Wear sunscreen, wear sunglasses, and maybe stop underestimating the power of a star that can light up a galaxy from 93 million miles away. Cold or not, the sun doesn't care. Bonus round, Arctic versus beach. Who wins the burn-off? Just for fun, let's pit them against each other. Beach, warm, inviting, predictable. UV reflection around 15 to 20 percent. You expect the burn. Arctic, cold, deceptive, full of betrayal. UV reflection up to 80 percent. You never see it coming. Winner, Arctic by a landslide and a sun flare. So next time you're packing for an expedition to the end of the Earth, don't just bring a compass and granola, bring the SPF, because nothing ruins a dramatic glacier selfie faster than a peeling forehead. And remember, just because it's snowing doesn't mean the sun took the day off. It's up there, watching, waiting, with rays sharper than your sarcasm. Also, just as a bonus irony, solar panels in the Arctic actually generate electricity more efficiently because of the same UV reflection and cool temperatures. So yes, even your gadgets know, the Arctic sun is not to be underestimated. If solar panels get smarter protection than your skin, it's time to reevaluate your packing list.